Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I haven't done one of these in a while. I'm going to be going over three different tracks today uh, with my uh, selections, my uh, values for the day. Uh, it's a Saturday where I don't have too much going on, so I had time to look. And uh, as I promised you guys, from time to time, I will go and put this out. And again, even though it's probably the, <laughs> uh, the sport, the endeavor where I have the biggest edge to share with you, honestly, over the years... Um, uh, we're still going to make this free for true DFS members. And actually for anybody who subscribes to the YouTube channel, uh, if you guys want to thank me for this, which is, uh, you know, I, I can't stress the, the edge you're getting in these picks. I mean, it, it's going to take probably seven lifetimes to realize it, but anyway, uh, if, if you want to thank us, just, um, we do a lot of DFS content on truedfs.com. If you want to join there, that would be great. And also if you want to bet on, XB Select, which is where I've been betting for you know, 25 years at least. Um, you can set up an account there. I think you use TrueDFS as the uh, promo code. And I think that you get something for free. Now, again, there are a lot of places you can bet. There's really not, you know, one over the other, other or anything like that. But people ask how they can thank me for this, and that is one way to do it. Um, so a couple of rules. I'm not going to get into why I like any of these horses. I'm not going to get into sheet theory or anything like that. I'm just really going to cut to it and just go race by race and let you know whether I think there's value or not. Um, the other kind of thing I would remind everybody is that you should never really bet on any horse racing in uh, before there's say one or two minutes to post, because you have to take advantage of the fact that these odds change and you want to be sure that you're getting good value. And especially some of these smaller tracks, you could bet something with 10 minutes to post. And then next thing you know, um, people pound on it and you end up getting terrible value. So the, even though I'm, I'm giving you guys this preview um, well before the races start, um, you guys yourselves should never bet any of these things until there's at least the most five minutes to post. And I'm going to try to give you some guidelines for what these odds should be for you to bet them. But, um, you know, that's just the way this is going to have to be. And there also could be scratches, uh, but unfortunately, this is the time where I'm doing this. So we're going to look at three different tracks. We're going to look at uh, Gulfstream, uh, uh, Churchill Downs, and Santa Anita. And uh, let's just get right to it. Um, all right, so race one at Gulfstream, there's really no value. I'm just kind of talking through this. The two, three, five, six, seven, nine, really no value at all. Um, race number two. The one is sort of a lock, no value over there. Race three, I think the three and the six could be a little bit better with respect to value. So if you want to take a shot, you know, if listen, if you're around, you just want to just degen something. Um, the three and the six are just kind of are okay. Um, eight to one and six to one are both very, very reasonable prices. I guess I would say that if either of them are over five to one, it's probably worth it. And you could bet, but these two in exact as if you want. It's not like incredible value, but again, if you're around doing nothing, I think the three and the six are okay. Right. Um, race number four at Gulfstream. I think that the six might be okay value as well. Um, again, it's not, and I'll, I'll stress what I think are just incredible plays versus which is just kind of okay. I think the six is just kind of okay. Um, he is spotting 10 pounds to the four, which is, which is kind of rough. Um, but it's fine. So listen, if you want to do something, you, you hook up the, th uh, race three, the three and the six with the six here in race four, uh, you know, that's a shot. So that's really not bad. Race number five. Um, pretty much anybody can win this race made in two year olds. I will say that the five Sir Mason is really good value at 12 to one. Uh, I would go so far to say that even over seven to one, it's pretty good value. So again, if you want to play pick threes, races three through five you know, three, six with six, with five. As a matter of fact, like if you really want it just to have action, um, you could do like a pick five and I'll show you what that would look like. So like race, pick five and race one, assuming these guys all go, you play all these horses that I thought were kind of good, but just the value wasn't there. This is probably not the greatest way to play, but I'm going to show you an example. The one's probably a lock. He's going to be like one to five there. And then the third race, you just go three, six, and the pick five, and then you go with the six, and then you go with the uh, the five. Um, so this is a pick five, which is costs you very, very little for 50 cents. It's like literally $6. 
Um, you're probably going to be live going to these last three races. And, uh, you know, this could, this could pay a lot. Um, what you could do also is wait to see how races one and two go. Um, well, not wait and see. You could just forget about races one and two and just start with race three. But again, it depends on what you want to do. Now, obviously, if you bet, you know, you pick five and you lose either race one or two, you probably want to press in race three, four, and five. Maybe do a double three, six with six, you know, six with five, depending on how much action you want. Um, as a matter of fact, just for fun. Just, just, all right. Um, so let's go back to race number six. Um, race number six, I thought the five was okay value at eight to one. Um, one of the issues with him is that a lot of his numbers are, her numbers are skewed because she's usually off slow and wide. And which means that she usually does go off slow and is wide. So her numbers are going to look worse than the others. So she could run a pretty good race and still end up losing. Um, even so, I think an eight to one is certainly worth it. Even the, anything over six to one, I think is pretty decent. So I do like the five there, uh, black ice. Um, all right, race number seven. I thought the one, three, six, and seven were all pretty solid. Didn't really like the four. I thought the one was okay. Uh, okay value at six to one. So glazed ginger, not bad. Race number eight. Okay. Uh, the most likely winner is the two, I believe, at nine to two. So that's obviously pretty solid, but if you really wanted to take a shot, and again, my, my previous like okay pick just didn't come in and you just really on tilt, you could play the three lightning runner at 20 to one. And I think that uh, that's extremely good value. Um, you could bet him to win. You could do a ridiculous exact box with two, three, which is probably going to pay 200 uh, each way, maybe. Maybe not each way. Uh, three, two could pay 200. Two, three could probably pay 140 uh, for $2. But in any case, the three is a really, really you know, good fishy spec bomb at 20 to one. Uh, and then race number nine, I really don't have much of anything there. One, two, five, six, seven. I didn't like the four, if that matters. Um, so I, I don't like Maddenly too much. I think that pretty much anybody can win here. I would definitely not touch that. Race. However, I'll get back to that. Race 10, uh, the eight and the nine are probably best, but really no value there. So what you can do, again, if you get, want to do something that's going to pay like a ton, you could do even the late pick five. So you started with race number six, and you go something like black ice with, and then you could just do the one, but let's just, let's just do all these. One, three, six, seven, and then here we can go the two and the three, and then race. And here we can go one, two. I mean, pretty much anybody here. Five, six, seven. We're going to, we'll toss the favorites. As a matter of fact, for, for the purpose of this wager, we'll probably use them all. And then in race, uh, the last one, put in the kind of the queue here, the eight, nine. And so here, this one would cost for 50 cents, about $56. And this is more weighted towards these first couple of races. So yeah, let's go ahead. Let's go put this in. So that is a uh, Gulfstream. Now, again, you can go back and re look at these picks again. You got to watch for scratches and all that stuff, but um, uh, that's Gulfstream. Um, going in chronological order, let's go to Churchill. Um, race number one, I think that the five might be able to beat the one. The one is going to be the most likely winner, but as you could see already, he's taking quite a bit of money. He's going to be three to five. So I do think the five is pretty decent value there. Um, but it's it's one on the five, but I would play the five, I believe. Okay, race number two. Uh, the one is a tremendous bet here at 10 to one. Um, uh, um, but I think the one is uh, uh, with the with the scratches as well. Yeah, hold on. My partners. But I still think that it's probably the most likely winner, uh, even though it's 10 to 1 morning line. So I would I would use the one here. Now again, you don't have to be as greedy. You don't need 10 to 1 because the five and the seven are out, but even anything over four to one, even is fine for this horse. Um 
All right, race number three. Uh, we got a couple of scratches here. Really don't like this one at all. So race three. Let me take another look at this real quick while I'm here. I'm going to look at the sheets for this, and again, I'm not going to get into where all this comes from, but I'll look at it. I'll actually I'll look at it on the other page here, just real, real quick. Sorry about this. Um, the nine is not bad. The eight is not bad. So with all these horses, seven, eight, nine, it looks like it's probably a wheel. Five looks pretty solid. It's it's basically an all. So pretty much anybody can win this race. Race four, definitely anybody can win this race. So no bet here. And then race number five. What is this? Do I, did I write this correctly? This is pretty odd if this is right. Yeah. I, I, if you want a bomb here, the two at 20 to one is really, really good value. Wow. The two at, at 20 to one morning line. Oh, let's go. I mean, the three is fine. The eight is fine. And the 12 is fine. But the two, wow. All right, I was, I was just alerting my partner to some of these, some of these, some of these values that are out there. This is kind of nuts. So at Churchill, if you want, you want to again bet this early pick five. You know, you can be greedy. You can just take the five, or you could go with the one five here. You play Magna Mesa, and then here we can go all, and then all, and then here we'll go the the two, and this could pay like billions and billions for sixty three dollars. So we'll see what that looks like. All right, now moving on to race number six. Race number six, uh, I like the two and the four. Wait, to beat the eight. Well, eight's now scratched to beat the five. So I think the two and the four are really, really good values. Last cookie in Bucktown. And that's in race six. Race seven. Uh, I'd like the two and the nine to beat the so, sort of solid five. So the two Rockstar uh, Parking and the nine for Dawn, very, very strong. Uh, race number eight, I had nothing really to speak of there. The four, six, seven, 11, no real value, just kind of like a nice four horses to kind of hold your pick threes, fours and fives together. Race number nine, I thought the one and the six were incredible values. Um, not that these other horses can't win, but I mean, this is where you make your money. Uh, Seize the night, Skyro, both extremely long and both uh, all very, very logical. And then the last two races, uh, it's basically two wheels, except I, I actually don't really even like the four that much, the favorite. In race 10, nor do I like the nine. I, I don't like the nine at all there. Um, I probably wouldn't fade them just because in case our other long shots come in, I don't want to lose because of that. As a matter of fact, I'll show you what we're supposed to do. So race 11, by the way, is another just stone wheel. There's like 12 horses in there, so it's kind of tough. So there's two ways you can really play this. Like if you wanted to bet the pick five, I mean, you're going to end up playing all in these last two races, and you're really going to be diluting your, your equity here. I mean, you can just for the hell of it, like in race seven, you go, um, let's say again, you go two nine with um, four, six, seven, 11. Let's see what this even costs. It's going to be a lot, right? And then with one six, and then if, let's say you go all in all, I mean, it's going to cost like a fortune. And you're diluting your earlier, you know, opinions. So what you probably should do is not play the, the pick five here. You're supposed to just play something like the pick three. So you play um, like two, four. What was it? Uh, wait, race six for the one. Sorry about that. So race six, you play the two, four big values. It's crazy with the. So, and then you go with the two, nine, then with the four, six, seven, 11. 
And then you could also do daily doubles, two, four with two, nine, because our opinion in, is four, six, seven, 11 is not great. Uh, and then you can just keep rolling it over. You can go then, you go to race seven. You see what I'm, see what I'm doing here? So race seven, you go two, nine with four, six, seven, 11, again, holding it together. And then um, one, six, lots, lots of opportunities to lose money. I mean, lots of opportunities to get some good value over there. And that's, uh, and that's Churchill. Okay, race number uh, one, at Santa Anita, and that's the last track we're going to do. It's definitely the least appealing of them all, but you know how it goes, man. I mean, Santa Anita starts at four o'clock. And once you lose all your money, you know, Churchill and and at, at Gulfstream, I mean, if you're still on tilt and you have any money left over, you're certainly want, gonna want to bet Santa Anita to get your money back. Um, so let's take a look. So race one, I do think the three and the four, Geezer and Uncle John, are just not just as good. They're just a little bit worse than the two. Double jab. So if you get, say, seven, eight, nine to one on these two, I think this is fine. Then you get a bunch of races with these with solid favorites, like race two, the one, two, and four, I think are very solid. Race three, I think the one, four are both solid. No real value there. Race four, I think the three was okay. Um, uh, to beat the six, I think so. Let me just double check that one as well. Because I had it written down a little differently. Race four. Um, well, Tijon Pass obviously is good. Uh, yeah, the three is uh, that's just just okay. Three to beat the six is really not that big a deal. Uh, and then race number five. I mean, okay, this isn't bad. One, four, eight, nine are all good value, but these favorites aren't bad either. Probably. Honestly, hate to say this is probably a pass. I got something good for you later, though. Don't worry. Race six, chalk, two, three, four, seven, nothing really to do there. Race number seven, I think the seven is solid enough at six to one. Um, so I maybe would try that. Race eight. I think it's all right. The one senior Buscator five to one to beat the two and the three, but all three of them are solid. But you've lost all your money, you know, and, and, you know, you lost, you need something to do at the end of the day, you can play the Sumter, the three in race number nine at Santa Anita. Uh, I think it's, you know, it's not quite as good as the two and the six, but at that price, I would give that a shot. Um, and then race number 10, really not much. So as as I stressed earlier, the majority of, of the juice is going to be coming from uh, the first two tracks, Churchill and Gulfstream. But uh, again, like if, if you, you know, you lose all your money there and then you forget, you know, whatever it is, set an alarm for maybe race nine at Santa Anita to maybe get your money back and to lose more. I mean, to 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 play a good solid bet on Sumter. And that will do it. Again, uh, check out TrueDFS for more uh, content, mostly in the TrueDFS space. But we do put some sports uh, betting up there as well. And uh, that'll do it. Have a great day.